<laughs> hey, listen, I'm glad I'm on the radio today. I'm glad I'm doing the podcast. I found out about 45 minutes ago that my podcast was set for a different time. So I changed the time. I was able to make it happen. But I wasn't able to change the intro. Who cares? We're just going to move on. Things happen. All right, I'm glad you're here, whether you're listening on the radio. If you're not familiar with my voice, I am not Peter Mingles. I am Greg Dwyer, and we're talking about Diamond Mine, so I'm glad that you're here. A couple weeks back, we started with this idea of talking about the diamond, right? We talked about D, and D stands for decide. Decide where you are, not necessarily decide where you want to be. It takes a lot of courage to decide where you are, which means you get on the scale, you look at your weight, maybe you get your blood tested or blood pressure, you look at some numbers, maybe it's your finances, you look at your finance. You're deciding where you are because most people, including myself, we have this tendency to drift. I'm reading this book right now called Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. You're probably familiar with Think and Grow Rich. I picked it up a couple years ago, but the idea is there's this mysterious demonic force that wants you to drift, and so you have no purpose in life. Sound familiar? And so this idea of deciding where you are is really important. Like if you're trying to get to Vegas, or you're trying to get to New York City, or you're trying to get to LA, the first thing you want to figure out is what? Where you are. Are you in Connecticut? Are you in New York? Are you in Massachusetts? Where are you? So when we talk about the D and diamond, the first step is to decide where you are. Go look at your oil tank. See how much oil is down there. Take your blood pressure. Get on a scale. Look at your finances. Look at your retirement. You know, these are all things that you can measure. Then the week after that, we talked about the idea of the I, which stands for what is important to you. Now, it can't be everything. You can't have a million things that are important. It's just crazy, you know. People will say to me, well, I don't know what's important. You know, everything's important and everything. And Okay, let's just be real here. There's only a few things. You know, it's your health. It's relationships. It's money. It's what money can buy. It's your emotional health. It's your career. It's your calling. It's your spiritual connecting connection. You know, there's only so many things, but you need the time. You need the time to stop and to really think about What's really important? What should I focus on this month? You know, what should I focus on this year? Should be my finances or my relationships or my health or my career? What do I want to do? So we talked a little bit about realizing what's important. And there's not a million categories. There's probably maybe five to ten categories and that's about it. I don't know about you, but I blow things out of my mind. And, uh, you know, we make them bigger. We make them brighter. We make them crazy. And when you really stop to think... There's only a few things you got to manage, you know, your mental health, your physical health, your relationships, your money, your career, your passion, your calling, your weight, right? Things like that. Then we talked about aiming. Last week, we talked about how to aim to make it happen, how to get everything congruent so that you're moving in the right direction. You don't want to be running east looking for a sunset. So it's important that you know what's important to you, you know where you are, and you're aiming your mind towards what you want. Now today, we're gonna to talk about the M, and I'm really excited. This has to do with your mind. The name of my company is called Diamond Mind Potential, and the way I have uh, it represented as, as a diamond, Diamond Mind Potential, living to your full potential unlocking your full potential, using your mind. Now, obviously many people over the years have talked about this idea that your mind is the key. You know, Houdini used to say, my brain is the key or my mind is the key that sets me free. When I first started reading about this and studying about this and actually just writing down my own goals, I ran into this invisible barrier. And it really was myself. You know, I've heard this for 20, 30 years. The biggest thing that gets into uh, the way or in the way is people's unlimited beliefs that they're not even aware of. They're, they're not even aware of these things. And so I represent it as a triangle. 
And the top part of the triangle is blue, like 5% of the triangle is colored in blue, the rest of it is not. And that represents the difference between the conscious mind and the unconscious, or the other than conscious. So people will say, I want to lose weight, however, you really dig into it and you find out they have secondary gains. You know, there's, there's a reason why they're heavier, there's a reason why they're not losing weight. There's a reason why, you know, they're staying at a certain financial position. It's a secondary gain. And so when I first looked at this, I said, there's got to be a way to change this so that people can get past these invisible forces. I talked about it last week, and if you've ever heard my lecture, I talk about it with the movie Groundhog Day. You know, this guy's trying to change everything, Phil Connors. But the problem is, He's trying to change the environment. He's trying to manipulate things. He's, he's not having a lot of success changing his life. I don't know if you can relate to that. But the thing that he's coming up against is his beliefs. His beliefs about himself, about other people, about, you know, a lot of things. We call them global beliefs. And until that changes, nothing else really changes. And so what I love about the movie, and maybe you love it too, is that towards the end of the movie, he goes through this transformation because he changes. He changes from the inside out. He, realize, he realizes that what he values, which was himself, that what really is going to make him happy is contributing to other people, right? So that shifts. His values shift. His beliefs shift. And ultimately, his identity shifts. He becomes a different person. Who knows if it took a week, a month, a year, or a thousand years, we don't know for sure. But I know this, we don't have a thousand years. You know, we, we'll be lucky if we have 80 years or 90 years, right? So what's the secret? The secret to using our minds to unlock our full potential. And of course, this is not a cult. I'm not asking you to send in your donation. I'm not asking you to follow me. I'm just asking you to look at your own mind and ask yourself what gets in the way and if you get up in the morning and look in the mirror mirror you'll probably recognize that it is you what's getting in the way are things that you are not aware of so when I talk in my lecture I talk about the unconscious mind and I talk about the conscious mind and first of all I talk about the conscious mind so we're gonna spend a few minutes talking about that and then we're going to take a commercial and then after that we're going to go into the unconscious mind. So when I first started looking into this around the year 2000, I spent a lot of time buying books, buying audios, and this was the time when they were, you know, tapes, you know, cassette tapes. In fact, if you come to my house and go to my basement, you'll find a lot of cassette tapes in the basement that I haven't even listened to, half of them. And, uh, I just bought everything that I could as far as audio tapes. Some I listened to, some I never got around to. Books, seminars, workshops, you name it. I spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Probably from the year, I don't know, 2000 to at least 2010. I mean, still buy things, but not as much as I did back then. What I was looking to do is to change myself so that I could take the action that I needed to get where I wanted to go. And just like the guy in the movie Groundhog Day, I was hitting up against this invisible force. And primarily because I was working on my conscious mind. If you think of a triangle and the top is the conscious mind, only like 5%, and the 95 is really running the show, which is below. Or if you think of an iceberg, like you think of an iceberg, you've probably seen it before where below is where all of the mass is. That's, that's what's really holding it together. You're only seeing, you're only seeing this. But if you're gonna focus on the conscious mind, you're probably gonna get distracted. And this is the reason why I, I started asking this question back in 2006, when I got on stage for one of the very first time. I said, you know, these guys are really, really excited and they're focused and they're gonna make their dreams come true, but what about a month from now? What about three months from now? Are they going to execute? Are they going to follow through? Are they going to stay focused? And the answer is, and i got to be honest with you, the answer is that most people don't execute. 
Most people get really excited about buying a book or going to a seminar or listening to an audio or being on a podcast or looking at something at YouTube and they don't do anything with it. I was talking to somebody the other day and he said on video courses that people buy, $197, $97 or even, even expensive video courses, audio courses or you know training courses, only like 8% of the people that of the people that buy them, I should say, only 8% of the people watch them. So, as an example, if you had 100 people, 100 people, they bought your course, only like 5 or 8 of them would actually watch it. Through the whole thing. I mean, that's to me, that's startling. These are people who invested, and they don't watch it. And only a small percentage of people will actually watch it. It's even more startling. Because of the people that watch it, how many of them are actually going to execute it, meaning they're going to change their life with the material? I, I have to tell you, very few, very few know how to execute. And this is one of the reasons why I, I kind of got into this, because it doesn't make sense to purchase something just for the sake of feeling happy about it. You know, a dopamine hit. And even if you did get to around, even if you got around to listening to it, are you going to apply it to your life? Are you going to go to the gym? Are you going to you going to ask that person out? Are you going to do something with your finances? You know, this is where people drop the ball. It's like New Year's Eve resolution. So this this topic is really near to me, dear to me. Like it's not just something I lifted off a, a bookshelf and started reading and say, oh, this be interesting to talk about. This really got me thinking. Why is it that some people just don't? execute and do what they need to do. They don't get into action. Well, the, the reason I think it's because they're not using their mind fully, meaning they're only focusing on their conscious mind. So in my lectures, The Importance of Focus, I ask people, I say, what do people do? Or a better question is, what do you do to get yourself focused? You know, some people say, well, I make my bed in the morning, or I exercise in the morning, or I do something, I have some kind of routine, that's great. But what most people tell me is what I've seen on Google. If you go on Google and you Google, you know, how to stay focused, last time I checked, these are the things you're going to find. Get a good night's sleep, get out in nature, exercise, take breaks, listen to music, eat a great balanced meal, avoid caffeine, work online, declutter your office space, and then get this, have a to-do list. Now all of these things have one thing in common. All they have in common is this one thing. They rely on the conscious mind. About a couple years ago, I downloaded a couple books on how to stay focused. It all had to do primarily with the conscious mind. Do this, clean up your space, Go for walks, listen to music. It's all focused on what you need to do to be focused, which is good, don't get me wrong, but I do think there's a better way, and that's using your mind fully. Now, in my lecture, The Importance of Focus, I talk about this enemy called misdirection. M-I-S-S, -S, miss, like a first title, misdirection, right, misdirection. Every magician knows who misdirection is. If you don't know who misdirection is, she's the one that gets in and gets you off track. And I say in front of my audiences that misdirection has three tricks, three primary tricks to trip you up. And the first trip, trick is multitasking. What she wants to do is she wants you to be multitasking. Now, I will tell you it's not good for you, especially when you're driving, but we're not really good at it, and I find the older I get, the less I like to do it. You know, like I can cook a meal and do the laundry and talk on the phone, but I'm doing this 100%. I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm not focusing on anything else. And so multitasking is one of her tricks. The other one is overloading, and that is just so much information coming at you that you just can't handle it. And the last one is programming. So we're going to we're going to break this down in the next 14 minutes that we have. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick break. I don't even know if it's going to be my commercial. I'm going to be looking for it right here. We'll see if I can push the button and see if we hear from Greg Dwyer. If not, it'll be Peter Mingles. Let's see what happens.
matters most to you and achieve more? Then you owe it to yourself to read Greg's ebook at greatwireebook.com. That's www.greatwireebook.com. Download it today and give it away. As always, we want to thank you for listening to the Great Wire Radio Show on Building Parsons Radio with motivational speaker Great Wire. Now back to our show. Take it away, Greg. Okay, that was fun. That was my commercial. So, as I said at the top of the call, I looked at the time. It was 12 p.m., which was a couple hours before. So, I just went in and changed it. Uh, however, I didn't change the intro. Hey, it is what it is. So, multitasking and also overloading. Let's talk about those two things. And the reason why I group them together is because they have to do with the conscious mind. People who make New Year's Eve resolutions or people that go to a workshop or a seminar, they get really excited, right? And then Monday morning rolls around. Now, tomorrow's Monday, right? If you're watching this on a Sunday. And then people, you know, they're just like, they don't, they don't follow through. They're, they're looking for the next high. They're looking for the next bit of information. Now, the reason I can say this is because I've done it too. I have been guilty of this as well. So multitasking is when you're trying to just do too many things at once and you really don't get anything done. And what I learned is this, importance directs focus. Importance directs focus. So if something is really important to you, like your child or your husband or your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or balancing your checking account or, or driving a car. Let me give you an example of driving a car because I think this is one thing I think everybody can relate to because most of us drive cars. 400,000 people every single year on the highway get hurt because they're driving a car and they look down at their cell phone at the wrong time and they go to the ambulance or they get a sprained neck and they go to a chiropractor or a doctor. 400,000 people every single year get into a car accident because they're trying to multitask. On average, we pick up our phones, we tap it, we swipe it, we click it 2,600 times a day. A lot of times we do it when we're driving or we do it when we're talking to someone or we're, the other day I was at uh, Mohegan Sun and a colleague of mine, John Stetson, was putting on a great performance uh, four o'clock Sunday afternoon, which was yesterday. And someone was on his phone in the front row. And this is what John said to him. He goes, uh, sir, are you expecting a kidney? Are you looking for a kidney? And the guy goes, he puts down his phone, he goes, no, why? He says, well, I don't know why you'd be texting in, in the middle of my show. <laughs> I was just like, oh, touche. I, I wrote that down. I said to myself, that's a great line. People have all of these things going on, you know. I, he wasn't looking for a, t uh, a kidney. He was just on his phone texting, right, or talking to somebody, whatever. Kind of crazy, kind of rude, really. But this is, this is the society we're in, you know? You ever talk to somebody and you know they're on Facebook, they're not listening to you, they're doing something else, and you're like, you're talking to them and they're not really listening? Well, at work, when people go to work, 12 and a half hours every single week is wasted because people show up at UPS or the school or wherever they work and they're not focused on their job. They're just not doing it. They're doing their job, but they're also focusing on something else, which is looking at their texts or their cell phones. I, I've worked with some companies where they don't even allow their employees to bring the phone into their desk. It has to go in the back room. They can't even touch it. They have to focus on their customers. They can't be looking at their phone. They can't be doing any of that. So 400,000 people get hurt every year. We pick up our phones, we tap it, we swipe it, we click it 12 and a half times, uh, 2,000, sorry, 2,600 times a day, and we waste about 12 and a half hours per week. Now, I don't know how they figure this out, but they estimate that $650 billion is wasted every single year in America because people are just not engaged at work. And sadly, sadly, 4,000 people every year die in America because they're driving a car and they look down at the cell phone at the wrong time. Four thousand people die just because they try to multitask at the wrong time. So what I learned is this. You can't stay focused if you're going to allow multitasking to overtake you or overloading. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work. So you have to be clear. Okay, between nine and ten this is what I'm going to focus on. Or you say from three to four, this is what I'm going to focus on. And I'm not going to allow anything, anything else to get in the way. So that's multitasking. 
What's the next trick she's got? The next trick she's got is overloading. Overloading our senses. Magicians do this too. You know, they just give us so much information that we can't follow it. There's no way we can follow it. Overwhelm is when we try to take in everything and we can't do it. George Miller, many years ago, 1956 I think it was, he wrote a paper called The Magical Number of Seven. And what he said was billions of bits of information are coming at us. We cannot focus on all of it. It's impossible. We focus on a few chunks, you know, give or take seven, maybe five or nine. That's it. In other words, we cannot focus on everything. It's impossible. There's no way in the world we can do it. We try to do it, but we can't do it. There's a video online, you can Google it later, don't do it now, it's called the Monkey Business Illusion, where they have two teams, a white team dressed in white jerseys and a black team dressed like me in black jerseys and they're passing a basketball. And you're supposed to count how many times they pass the basketball. Spoiler alert, it's like 16. But in the middle, a gorilla walks out, a guy in a suit walks out, I should say, in a gorilla suit, and 50% of the people don't see it because they're focusing on one thing. Because if you overload a person's senses, they can't, they can't focus on everything. It's, we're, we're limited. I'm limited. You're limited. If you're married, you know you have a spouse. They're limited. You're not limited, but you know what I mean. Overloading is when we just can't take it all in. It's just too much information. It's like if I told you to look around for everything that's red, maybe seven things that are red, you could do that. Maybe seven things that are blue, you could do that. But if I started saying, okay, now let's do another seven things that are red that are different, different. Look around your room, seven things that are blue. Eventually, you would get to the point where it would be complete overwhelm. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. So back to the monkey business illusion. They showed the video to the group of people that watched it the first time. And this time they say, watch, just watch. And what they did is they changed the color of the curtain. Like, I don't know, it was blue and they turned it to red or something like that. And nobody saw it. When you overload people with information or you do it to yourself, there's no way you can focus. So misdirection has these two tricks. The first trick is multitasking, which a lot of times in companies we get rewarded to doing that. That's okay, you can do it, but if it's really important, if it's really important, like customer service, I don't think talking to a customer or even somebody within your organization and looking at your cell phone at the same time is really gonna help because they, they know you're communicating to them, hey, you're not important. No, I gotta, I gotta look at this text. You know, it's like the guy in the in the middle of the the show last night at 4:30 at John Stetson's show. I could I couldn't believe it. The guy was texting just like that. So that's multitasking. Overloading is when we try to take in too much sensory information, and we get stressed, we get sick, we get burnt out, and we're wondering why we never finished that book. We're wondering why we never you know started investing in our 401k or we we never started that business or we never asked that girl out or that guy out or did what we said we were going to do when we went to that workshop last week. Why? Because we are multitasking, we are overwhelmed and there's no way in the world you're using your mind correctly because the conscious mind is completely burnt out at this point. There's nothing more you can do. This is the day you come home, you just fall into your bed, and you're like, that's it. So then I started thinking about this with the last couple minutes that we have left. Maybe the answer, maybe the answer is the unconscious, the other than conscious mind. Now here's the problem, here's the challenge, I should say. Programming, we have programming programming from our childhood. By the time we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, most people that study these things say what we think, what we say, what we do, it's already programmed. We're already programmed by our parents, by the authorities, by the people that we deal with, our views, our confirmation biases, how we see the world. So when I looked at this, I said to myself, all right, if the conscious mind is not the answer because the conscious mind can easily be distracted using multitasking and overload and then the unconscious mind is an issue because we're programmed what hope is there what hope is there for us to get down to the 95 percent which is down further in our mind to bring up diamonds and bring up jewels and gems so that we can have the life that we deserve 
I'm going to tell you the, the truth, I, according to me, it's not easy. If it was easy, I think everybody would do it. I think the people that say it's easy are people who want to sell you a course. And they know if they sell a hundred of them, eight people will watch it and maybe one will do it. I'm not here to tell you that this is easy. It's worth it. I, I will tell you 100% it is worth it because what you're doing is you're unlocking your mind. You're, you're able to use more of your mind when you get rid of multitasking. When you say, now I'm not saying you shouldn't ever do it, right? I mean, there's times to do it. However, when it's really truly important to you, like when I do my phone calls, let's say I do an hour block of phone calls, my cell phone shut off, this is shut off, that shut off, the music shut off, everything but the refrigerator is shut off. I mean, I am focused, and I set a timer, and I set a timer, because I know that if I'm going to multitask while I'm doing this task, it's not ever going to get done. It's just a waste of time. So I don't fool myself by allowing misdirection into that hour, hour time, right? And the same thing with overloading. I don't want too much information, you know, coming at me at the same time. So I'm only going to focus on just a few things or one thing. And that's, that's the key. So again, my experience learning this is that it's not easy, but it is worth it. When you recognize that your conscious mind is not really running the show. Your conscious mind is not, you know, somebody said to me last week, your conscious mind is like short-term memory. Your conscious mind is just kind of like on the surface. It's the unconscious mind that's making your decisions for you. Now, we're going to talk about this in the future, about how to condition your mind. Because to me, I think this is the answer. I, I have been looking at this for 20 years. I've read a lot of books. I've worked on this in my own life and this is what I really think the key is. The key is not telling somebody, hey, this is what I want you to do. I want you to, you know, take this and do this because they won't do it. Why? Because they got too many things going on. You know, I'll get to that. Multitasking, right? And then there's this idea of overloading with, I mean, look at the information that's going on in the world today. You're looking at the computer, you're looking at the cell phone, you're looking at social media, you're trying to take in the news. I think there's a purpose for this, and I think the purpose is to keep you distracted. Now, I sound like I'm preaching, but I'll tell you how I feel. I feel if you can keep a, pe a person distracted, you can control them. Because one day they wake up and they go, I don't know where I am. I don't know where I am in my health. I don't know where I am in my relationships. I don't know where I am in my finances. I have no idea because it's like going to a carnival. There's no, there's no problem going to a carnival as long as you don't live there. <laughs> you know, there comes to a point, I think, when you want to be focused so that you can unlock your potential. So relying on your conscious mind it's okay. You can, you can declutter your office space. You can make a to-do list. It's all good. You can listen to music, go for walks, get a good night's sleep, avoid caffeine. All of these things are good. But understand they rely on the conscious mind. And the programming below the surface is what's getting you to do what you're doing. That's got to change. And the only way I know how to change that is through conditioning, which doesn't happen overnight. And that's, this, that's the reason why I'm doing these 12, 30 minutes uh, sessions, because I do believe it takes 66, 90 days, 180 days. It doesn't happen all overnight. Like my father used to say, Rome wasn't built in a day. I'm going to push the commercial here, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye, everybody. Talk to you next week. Bye, everybody.